Hi, this is Terry Couty with Deep Sea Foundation. I'm up in Scottsdale, Arizona today with Dr. Patricia Clark. Dr. Clark is a breast surgeon who specializes in oncoplastic surgery for breast cancer patients, and she's at Ironwood Cancer Center in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm very pleased to have you today, Dr. Clark. Thanks for joining us. Nice to be here. Oh, thank you. So I have some questions that I've written down that I'd like to ask you today, uh, specifically about your work. And the first one is, if you could just give us a brief description as a breast surgeon specializing in oncoplastic surgeon, what does that mean for a patient? So oncoplastic surgery is generally referred to as reconstruction of lumpectomy defects. And in the U.S., traditionally, these have not been reconstructed, which can leave women with a dent or deformity in the breast. So since the 1980s in Europe and other parts of the world, breast surgeons have come together and they've borrowed and modified a set of plastic surgery techniques such as breast reduction, mastopexy, rearrangement of local tissues within the breast. So we can now add volume back into the breast or take the volume that's already within the breast, rearrange those tissues to prevent the dents and the deformities and the misshapen appearance that could happen with traditional lumpectomy. Okay, very interesting. Well, um, so tell me specifically what, who would be a good uh, uh, candidate for oncoplastic surgery? All patients that come for breast cancer mm -hmm. should be evaluated from an oncoplastic standpoint. For oncoplastics, what we want to do is we want to do a really good oncologic procedure where the cancer is completely removed, negative borders, you know, an appropriate cancer operation. That's the first priority. Absolutely. But the second priority is to leave the breast with the original function and form if that's possible. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the oncoplastic procedures that can also be some of the nipple sparing mastectomies. These can go on beyond just breast conservation and move over into mastectomy. Mm -hmm. So for breast conservation entirely, which is what I do, uh, the patient with a more generous breast size is the best candidate, but even women with small breasts who want conservation a lot of times we can just by planning our incisions correctly and planning if we're going to do volume replacement techniques, um, we can even salvage a, a smaller breast using these specialized techniques. Uh, you were thinking ahead in a question that I had for you about the size of the breast uh, in terms of that. So as far as uh, volume, do you sometimes use fat grafting to um, fill in some of those um, areas that need to be... Uh, Revolumize, so to speak? We can. When we come into volume, we, we separate the oncoplastic procedures into um, volume displacement, which means rearranging the local tissues and rebuilding the defect from those. And then there's volume replacement. The volume replacement is beyond the scope of uh, a non board certified plastic surgeon. Mm -hmm. um, so those require autologous tissue flaps, etc. So when we have a patient that doesn't want to lose her breast size at all, but she, we have to take out quite a bit for the tumor, mm -hmm. that's where you need a board-certified plastic surgeon to come in and mobilize distant tissue into that defect. If it's minor, that can be fat grafted as well. Okay. So the techniques that we use and that we modify the most often are the breast reduction and the breast lift procedures. Okay. And, and those are more the volume, repl not replacement, but displacement where we're just rearranging local tissues to reshape the breast. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So, um, it, you know, because ma men get breast cancer as well, um, mm -hmm. Are men good candidates for oncoplastic surgery, or can you address that? They for are. Us? So, mm -hmm. with men, traditionally, when a male got breast cancer, 
it used to be we would do a mastectomy. Mm -hmm. And now men can be treated just the same as women where they are lumpectomy candidates. A lot of men, their breast cancers are central in the breast, so they're right behind the nipple areola complex. Mm -hmm. If we can get negative margins on that, it's often possible to recruit tissue circumferentially around where we took the tumor and refill that with their own tissue, and that will avoid a deformity. If there are deformities, again, the plastic surgeons can come in and fat graft to improve mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So men are men are candidates as well as women. Mm -hmm. Okay, it sounds like you, um, in certain cases then, you work uh, as a team then with a plastic surgeon. Would, would This I mean, is, and yeah. so oncoplastic surgery in the U.S. is still evolving, and we have more breast surgeons now learning these techniques, mm -hmm. and we have some very basic techniques that most general surgeons and breast surgeons can learn fairly easily. Mm -hmm. And they're small lifts, they're, um, again, taking the tumor out, rearranging some of the tissue to fill the defects, they're hiding the incisions under the breast at the edge of the areola so they're not that apparent also laterally. And then the more advanced techniques that require some plastic surgery training mm -hmm. are the lifts and the reductions. So there, there are a few plastic surgeons in the country who do that, not plastic surgeons, but breast surgeons in the country who do that. Mm -hmm. Most of the places in the United States, that would require a team between the plastic surgeons and the breast surgeons to do those. Mm -hmm. The breast surgeons need the training to be able to recognize which patients are suitable to have that type of procedure and which type, which patients are not. Okay. So, so last question. Mm -hmm. A patient goes in, she finds out or he finds out that they have uh, a malignancy, they have a mm -hmm. lump in their breast. What vocabulary would you tell a breast cancer patient as a breast advocate uh, or a patient advocate, what question, what vocabulary would you tell a patient to go in uh, once mm -hmm. they have that information to find out if oncoplastic surgery is appropriate for them? I usually refer them to Dr. Google, and they should look for oncoplastic reduction mammoplasty or oncoplastic mastopexy, something along those terms, and they're going to see a lot of information about that on the internet. And again, it's, it's, it's anywhere from very simple procedures on up to very complex procedures to leave a woman with more normal form and shape. Mm -hmm. And that also includes doing a balancing procedure on the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, often okay. if we have if we have a fairly large tumor, we may significantly decrease that breast size by a cup or even two. Mm -hmm. So then it would be appropriate to go and do the surgery on the other side. Sure, for um, symmetry. For symmetry. Right. It, right. In my practice, it's interesting because I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I've been doing my own reduction mammoplasties for about 10 years now, mm -hmm. actually 12. But because I have excellent plastic surgery support, some of my patients have me do the entire procedure start to finish. Some of them we work with the plastic surgeons start to finish. And again, it becomes a very customized decision between breast surgeons, plastic surgeons, and the rest of the oncology team. So it's kind of exciting now to be able to offer this. Oh, very good. Well, lots of good information today. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right.